Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. This is the monthly video for the Smash Our Stash collaboration. The theme for August is paper scraps. Now, I went a little bit outside the bounds. I know you're shocked. Use some Kleenex box scraps, some vinyl scraps. I just made it scraps. Thing about scraps is they multiply. You just make more. I worked on this for days and days and days. I have made a giant mess. I need to make this a stopping point so I can start putting these things away in an organized manner or putting them with projects and get ready to go on a girls beach weekend for crafts. So if I don't stop now and make this video, you're never going to get this video. So we'll just have to call it done. I don't know if you are ever done with scraps. This collaboration is put on by Bourbon Creek Crafts. And if you watch Beth's channel, she's been working on scraps on all sorts of things for a long time. And I've been kind of making fun of her. And I feel like mm, maybe I shouldn't be judging because I got my own problems over here. I have scraps of old cardstock that are in 12 by 12 boxes, a 12, just one 12 by 12 in the cupboard. So what I did was I started with largest items. That's how I approach lots, lots of these projects where you're doing different things. And I went through and made what could be the layer for a card base or the layer that you would build your scraps on. So there's a Right here, there's a cream colored piece of paper in there and then there's a gray. So I cut a bunch of those and what I try and do if possible is cut them to the bigger size and then I can pick and choose which colors I want. So I have a bunch of these that I can layer scraps on when I go watch TV with Mr. Crafting and Relaxing. Then I have a whole bunch of scrap card fronts. Now in my dream mind, I assembled all these and impressed you with a whole bunch of finished projects, but Eh, look on the bright side. You got to see the progression. So these were scraps of paper and I just layered them up and you can see there's not a strategy. It's just whatever was big enough, whatever was four or maybe four and an eighth wide and large enough to make an A2 card front. That's how these get started. Then here's one that's completely done. The next thing I did was I started die cutting all sorts of die cutting and I had some scraps of foam so I used that too. So you can see it says hello and then I had some stars. This one I actually made a whole card. This is all die cut. Die cut from Kleenex boxes, scraps, scraps of vellum. I tried some scraps of vinyl. I don't know if this one's going to be successful when I actually go to years and try and take it apart. I mean I've got happy birthdays. I've got uh, more happy birthdays, thank yous. I was using punches and some of these I was traveling and I took a couple of dies and a small die cutter with me and so I just made tiny sentiments while I was traveling. I think when I was traveling all I cut was happy birthday and something else so there's a bunch of those. I got home and used ovals I'm kind of obsessed with the oval dies and so I cut a bunch of those and what I did was I have layering sets so I just cut one and we can layer them up on projects later but if you look in here this whole thing is full of sentiments. I did a bunch of hellos, happy birthday, thanks. I've got leaves mixed in there but I'll show you some others. It's just pulling something out and saying oh this will work with this die. I don't give it any thought. I mean a little bit, right? My leaves are brown and creamy, not purple so much. I've got stars in here. I have flower punches. So I was punching the petals out of scraps and I put those all in there and those could be layered up to make flowers later. This whole section is leaves. A bunch of my leaves dies are hooked together. So it, you know, a scrap of paper this big. I haven't actually gotten down to the tiny tinies. Some of them I did, but those were mostly done in groupings. And here, oh, this is my butterfly section. And then this bottom one is punches. Some circle, some scalloped. Just, oh, there's enough left to punch a circle. I'll put that in there. You might end up with a whole bunch of die cuts and things that don't work for you. But for the most part, what I find is I get inspired. It challenges me, like, what can I do with this big blue star? I honestly was lazy there was a giant piece of leftover vinyl from my friend Noni and I didn't want to cut a bunch of small stars and fight with the vinyl 
like the happy birthday thing. So I just cut big blue ones. You know, I have more scraps I could circle back. These were on big strips and I took a stamp and stamped sentiments in them. So I have them ready to go on cards now, but it was from a 12 by 12 piece of paper. There was also, it's a good day to be happy. So I cut that out and I just started looking at stuff and saying, how would I actually use this? What would it need to be? Look how cute this one is. This is gonna be a vertical card with some sort of sentiment across it. These again were scraps and a fun die that I have. So I'll trim them a little more tidy and put them on a card front and probably put a sentiment die right here. All sorts of like card making supplies here and there are no limits to my scraps. Then we get a little more into journaling and junk journaling supplies. And what I did was as I punch stuff, you can see that I grouped like items the way I would use them, not necessarily keeping everything that was the blue vinyl together or everything that was cut out of this paper together so I could mix and match later. But here I put all the tags and journaling items for a journal. These are cute little pieces of blue paper that I dyed. And then I put, we're having focusing problems. I don't know what's going on. Then I put bits of tissue and things on the front. These would be super cute, tucked in a little pocket in a journal. This was tissue box that came in Happy Mail. And so I made them into tags. I'm gonna punch there. I think I'm gonna put these in my holiday stuff because they would look awesome in a December daily. Then a uh, scrap that I made a an adorable tag out of. I'd probably cover one side of it with tea dyed paper or something neutral that I could write on. These were Kleenex box. So I made giant journaling cards. I don't think I'm gonna turn them into tags. I just cut them so that they could go in pockets. Same here. It's a little on the thin side. I could put another layer, but it's ready to write on as it is. So all of these are ready to write on. And I would tuck them into my tags and journaling cards bin, and they would be ready to go. These are Kleenex boxes, and this one was a cute, one of those beachy papers. So you've probably seen a lot of these papers. Pockets and tucks, things that you put these things in. I had envelopes. This was, I don't know, like it was junk mail or something. Same here, so I've covered up. Imagine these sewed into a journal. This is one page you could put a pocket or collage on. Then you would see this one, then you would see this one. Actually, it's upside down, I don't know if that matters. And that one. Then this one, I used a cute address label from one of our friends. I think that might've been Nancy's. Put it on red and white. This was from a magazine and I just really like that bedding and the ends are already cut off the envelopes, ready to be stitched in. Same idea here. And I had uh, something from a book that I liked and some fun collage in here, ready to go. Same here. I have a whole bunch of this paper and I don't know, I was using ovals so I die cut one and I had some scrap paper here. It's like a bank money thing, right? And you sew it in. Okay, this stuff, uh, Noni can tell you what it's called. I can't remember. She used it to make seat covers or something. It is sturdy as heck, but it die cuts. So I did somewhere, oh, here you go. I did die cut ovals, quite a few of them actually. So I can layer those up. Then I have these, I was imagining these as pockets in a journal. They're not all the same size. And I thought it would be fun to stitch around them. So that's why I wrote myself the note that said stitch around. I'm gonna set those by my sewing machine. Then look at this one. I love this one. This is a paper that I especially like. This I think was from Melody Made. It was one of her gel prints. And then these came in Happy Mail. So I layered it up on this envelope. And what I was imagining is gluing it on a page like this, well, maybe all the way around. So it's either a double pocket here and here, or maybe you glue it this way and this way and you can go in from the top and the side. I just thought it was really cute and I left it with the security stuff showing. I made one journal page, only one. I think because there was one full size piece of paper in the bin I was working with. This was a gel print that was really plain around the edges and the back was completely blank. So I imagined it as a page in a journal. This was scrap, like I didn't go get the stamp, put this stuff all on it. This paper is really cool, it has some gold in it. Added some stuff to the gel print itself and then put some stuff on the back. This is from a gel print. This is from 
uh, player piano roll. So I have a page, have some pockets, then tuck spots. Oh, here's another pocket. Again, this was mail. It's a pocket. I imagine it glued on um, this way and then you put your stuff in. And then this is the little tiny vellum pocket right here. Just fun. Just fiddling with things you have. I even used, I challenged myself to use that pink paper. All of these I imagine as vertical tuck spots on pages. You know, you connect them at the top and the bottom and you slide stuff behind them. You can also layer them up. Imagine this with a piece of black paper behind it. It's a little fun for contrast and it makes it a little more sturdy. This is the edge of an envelope. Maybe my Valentine's Day card. One side is crooked, but I thought this would be fun too to glue at each end on a page because it's already a pocket. So you could take something like this and put, well, it has to be shorter. Okay, imagine this is shorter and it fits in there. It might, yeah, look at that. You could just slide it in and then it would be on your page, but it would hold it on the page like this. Okay, maybe imagine the colors go together, but you get the idea. So it literally was a scrap of an envelope and I was like, what am I gonna do with this? How are we doing for time? We're long. So I'm gonna call it, I'll, I'll show you in a different video a little bit of the behind the scenes, but this is my Smash Our Stash collaboration video. I did not smash my scraps. I mean, I think I might've made a bigger mess, but I made so many fun things and I would not have done this if I wasn't in this collaboration. I would have just kept piling them up. And what happens to me is I usually keep my scraps in these boxes. I had multiple patterned ones, multiple solid ones. And then I keep my strips in a jar on the counter of solid cardstock. I had multiples. It had gotten away from me. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to go in the description down below and check out the other collaborators to see what they made with their scraps. And then next month is enamel dots, uh, liquid drops, and brads. That is going to be a hard month. We'll have to see. I'm terrible at the drops. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Bye-bye.